Welcome to the Chef's Kitchen Restaurant Edition. I'm your host, Nicole Gaffney, and we're here today at Nordon Preferred Kitchen Equipment Studios. And joining us in the kitchen is Chef Adam DeLasso of Garces Catering. Hi, how are you? Great, thanks. Wonderful to have you here. We've got a beautiful spread of ingredients. Yes, what thank are we you. making? Thank you for inviting me. We're making a traditional Spanish paella. Nice. Uh, one of the things that we do with Garce events, uh, we actually have a paella station that we put together. Cool. So we're going to show you how to make a paella, a Spanish paella, but I'm going to make it vegetarian. Interesting. So that some people and all the people in the event could, could have it or couldn't have it. There's a lot of dietary restrictions. Oh, yeah. And it's really, really easy to make. So I'll show you right over here. Great. Get started. So the first thing you have to start with is a traditional Spanish paella pan. It should be really thin, mm -hmm. only two, about two inches high, uh, really uh, durable. And this one's about an 18 inch paella pan. Looks like you've had this thing for a while. Yeah. <laughs> it has to be seasoned. So I'm gonna heat up the pan a little bit. And one of the things, one of the ingredients we're gonna use in it is called sofrito. And sofrito is basically peppers, onions, a little bit of garlic, sweat it down. It, this takes slow, a slow cook time, about a half hour. Oh, wow. Right, so we're gonna oil up the pan just a little bit. And if I didn't have a paella pan, could I substitute something else, or you really need this? You could substitute a, a thin pan that doesn't have a very high side to it, mm -hmm. uh, but it's tradi a traditional paella pan around this same type of pan. So it has to be thin, small, high, low sides. Okay. And your sofrito has to be, you could start out by cooking your sofrito in the pan mm -hmm. and letting it cook for about a half hour, just like this, nice and slow. But I did it ahead of time a little bit. You can also start it ahead of time. And then we're gonna take bamba rice. Bamba. So bamba rice is a medium grain rice. Mm -hmm. That is, there's a couple different rices you can use. Okay. This is the one that's a little bit more expensive. You're gonna spend a little more money, but it's gonna come out perfect for you. Well, we want perfect, yes. right? We don't want a, set, a subpar paella. So this is about, for this size pan, I'm gonna use one quart of bamba rice. Feed a lot of people here, I see. Yeah, a couple people. <laughs> so one of the things with, with paella, you're gonna see this very large pan, but I'm not gonna use a lot of rice in it because you want a very thin layer okay. of rice. That's why you need this big pan. Yep, you're gonna have this very thin layer of rice. I'm gonna mix it around a little bit so you, I'm toasting the rice kind of like what you would do with risotto. Okay. I'm gonna use a vegetable mm. saffron stock that is cold, I just have it in a pot, but it's cold and it's two to one. Okay. So whatever size paella you're making, you're gonna make your rice, one part rice, two parts stock. Great. So I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have this simmer and come up to a boil, but while, before that, I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna throw in a couple threads of saffron. A little extra, gild the lily. A li little bit, just so that we get a really nice color, a little bit more flavor. Just a little bit of saffron pinched right on top. It has such a beautiful floral flavor to it. So I'm just gonna have this come up to a boil. It's gonna have to come up to a really nice, strong boil. And I'm gonna mix it up so it's nice and flat. And then we're gonna cover that. We're gonna cover that and put that right into the oven at 350 degrees for about 15 minutes. That's it. That's it. You want a, a nice hard boil mm -hmm. and then bring it up in about 15 minutes in the oven. Stay tuned for more with Chef Adam DeLasso. This is amazing to be here at Nordon. The equipment's first class. This pizza oven, never seen it before. This is a great marriage to be with Nordon. I'm gonna show you how to marinate the gambas that are gonna gambas. go on top. What are gambas? Gambas are freshwater prawns. Nice. Right here. So they're freshwater prawns that are peeled. I peel them off. I mm -hmm. keep the heads on and the tails on and then devein the back of them. And then we put these nice long skewers through them so they stay mm. straight. And then it's easy to eat too. Yeah, it's a lot easy to eat. So it's a very easy, um, a very easy marinade. It's just parsley. Hmm. I just take whole parsley, take the tops right off. Just like this, and in a blender, any kind of size blender you can have, you have just okay. as long as it's, it can take the pureeing of it. All right. Uh, three cloves of garlic, and a little bit of oil. And that's just a regular vegetable oil. Just vegetable oil, a little bit of salt, and pepper. And one of the things that this does, with the garlic in it, the it'll actually start to break down some of the shrimp. 
with a the little garlic? bit. With mm -hmm. the garlic in it and the onion in it. It'll actually start to break down the shrimp so that it is, um, it'll break down the shrimp a little bit so that you can actually, it'll start to soften up the shrimp a little bit. Wow. You want just a little bit of oil in there so it'll start to puree. It takes a little caressing, but you got it. A little loving. <laughs> and you want to you wanna marinate these. So we come up with this really nice puree. It smells really great. It's, it has garlic, salt, pepper. Mm -hmm. And all I'm going to do is just pour it right over top of these fish mm. and let them sit for about an hour in the refrigerator and marinate them, rub them down a little bit. And quick. they'll actually come out a little bit marinated, just like this. The color of the oil that's left on the bottom is gorgeous. We're going to actually saute them on a plancha. A la plancha, what's a la that plancha. mean? So it just means a griddle or a flat surface. Mm -hmm. And you're going to sear them right on there, nice and hot. OK. Uh, we actually have a griddle in the back that's ready to go. Great. And we're just going to sear them off really quickly uh, and then get them right on top of the paella paella is ready to put in the oven. So it's boiling away. You want to get a really nice size boil on it. And now I just have two pieces of foil. I'm going to cover it up, turn it off so I don't, I don't burn myself. <laughs> wow. I don't even know if this would fit in my oven at home. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we have the commercial grade ovens. Here. Yeah, exactly. I mean, let's talk about this place for a second. It's gorgeous. It's amazing. We built this for chefs, so I hope you feel at home here. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do. It has all the top uh, piece of equipment. Just be careful. You have to be really careful with that. May yeah. I get the door for you? Of course. Or were you going to get it with your other hand? <laughs> I'm going to put this in the oven. And I'm I have one actually already finished. Now, I noticed you put that on the bottom rack as opposed to the top. Is that important for getting that crust on the bottom? No, not as important. Uh, that mm -hmm. is a convection oven with racks okay. in it. So it is important as convection, but I'm going to take it out. And you can see how all the liquid was absorbed. Yeah. And one of the things that you're going to take, it's called, it's a nice crust on the bottom of the pan. So I take it out of the oven, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to saute the rice just a oh, little bit on okay. top. So it gets crispy. And it helps and this, that you have these big burners. Yeah, this pan is a little bit bigger than that burner. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to move it around just a little bit. About how long will this take? About five minutes. So pretty so. quick. Pretty quick. You have to keep your eye on it a little. Keep your eye a little bit so you don't burn it. Right. Uh, but you want that crust. Sure. That crispiness. That's it, it's called syrup. Syrup. And, and it's on the bottom of of the paella, and that's what sets it apart. And you can see that the rice, when it's cooked, it's below those rivets, mm -hmm. right? And it's just a very thin layer. Most at most, it should be a half inch. Okay. Put a little bit of olive oil on top. That's going to help the browning. Yep. And now we're going to saute our our gambas. Beautiful. Okay. So the gum has been marinating there about an hour. So I'm just going to take a little bit more oil just so they don't burn. Squeeze it right on top. And they're already seasoned. So we're going to take and put them right on this plancha. Now, if I didn't have a plancha, could I do this on the grill instead or just you in a saute it, pan? You could do it on a saute pan. You could do it uh, on the grill. But the grill, the only problem is these wooden skewers might catch on fire. Yeah. And then you would have smoked planches. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like no matter how long you can soak the skewers, they still burn. Right, exactly. They're always going to catch on fire. Mm -hmm. This is why it's a really nice way to saute these. And if you have a griddle, okay. it's, it's amazing. Just like what you use for pancakes. Exactly. So these are just sauteing. You can see they're getting nice and crispy oh, yeah. on either side. That marinade is working. And our planche is super hot. Yes. And you don't want it to smoke okay. too much because as soon as you have a smoke on your plancha or on your grill or on your saute pan, mm -hmm. you're burning the oil. Right. That bitterness, that flavor, you don't want. Stay tuned for more from Nordon Preferred Kitchen Equipment. To be here at Nordon and cook in this kitchen is pretty incredible for me. It's a chef's dream come true to have all this wonderful equipment here. We're going to garnish this with just some fava beans. I love fava beans, and these are fresh. Fresh fava beans. Now, some pea shoots. Do you have any kind of a tip for getting the peels off the of favas? Because that can be <laughs> pretty cumbersome. Uh, yeah. So you you need to blanch the fava beans okay. in some water, shock them in some ice, and mm -hmm. just 
peel each one. Really there was, slowly. There was a, uh, <laughs> no name, I'm not going to name the restaurant, but <laughs> we used to have to peel them before we blanched them. Really? Because there's something, there's a gas inside the fava beans mm -hmm. that needs to be released. Okay. And that flavor of those fava beans won't get released if it's in the shell still. Wow. So I have the fava beans, a little pea shoots, a little lemon vinaigrette. Very springy. And then we're going to take our paella, nice and hot, to put over here. You cook with a lot of seasonal ingredients over at Garces. Yes, yes, we have a lot of seasonal ingredients. Actually, uh, just yesterday, I was out at the park with my son for getting some ramps. Nice. And we were foraging with some ramps, but instead, I think we started to skip some rocks instead. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to take these gambas that are done. It only takes a few minutes right on the plancha. And you must be getting very busy over at Garces Catering with the wedding season upon us. Yes. We're exclusive to the Kimmel Center. Okay. Um, and we're booked into 2016 already with oh the weddings. Oh my God. And we do a lot of off-site weddings. Just mm -hmm. last weekend we had five weddings. Jeez. And we have a couple of events every day. So we're just going to garnish the top of the plate around the outside with these. They you can leave wonderful. these off if you like. Mm -hmm. we'll put them on the side even. Put them on the side, because this is vegetarian. Mm -hmm. So that people could eat it if they like, if they're not allergic to shellfish. A lot of times paella is served with some bread, some crostinis that mm -hmm. can go around it. And I'm just going to finish it off. One more thing. It's a guandilla. Guandilla. Guandilla is a, a pepper, a pickled mm -hmm. pepper. We're just going to put this on top of each one of these. Sweet pepper? It's a, a little bit spicy, okay. but smoky. Fresh pepper, not dried. No, it's pickled actually. Really? This is pickled. Okay. You can get them fresh, you can get them dried. Mm -hmm. And this is our paella. Beautiful. The other addition to our menu, not we have hot smoked salmon. Ooh. One of the things with hot smoked salmon, you're gonna, we have a smoker in the back. We're going to use this gorgeous Nouveau smoker. Yeah, and this is a, it's what is great about a smoker like this mm -hmm. is that this wood chips actually go on the side. It's very user friendly, this smoker. Yes. Wood chips go on the side, they go in, and you can actually set the temperature. So a lot of times you can, when deal. you're doing the smoking and any kind of smoking, you're just hoping the temperature comes up. <laughs> <laughs> and it takes a while. Here, yeah. you can turn it on, smoke it, set the temperature, set a timer, and you're good. That's great. So what I have here is sac uh, Schooner Bay salmon. It's a sustainable salmon. Great. Uh, that I just have portions of it, and I'm going to cure it for, for a minute. Is this wild caught or farm raised? It's farm raised. Mm -hmm. Because wild caught uh, is seasonal, mm -hmm. and it's not always sustainable. Right. So you have a couple things with seasonality and sustainable sure. and local. Um, so I'm going to take a little bit of salt. Oh, is that coriander? This is coriander. It's really fragrant. A little bit of fennel seed. Mm. And a little bit of brown sugar. Did you toast these first? Because they're yeah. really aromatic. I toasted them and I used the blender mm -hmm. just to blend them up. Nice. Yeah. So you don't even need a spice grinder and I'll just right. mix these together. Just use a blender. Great tip. And you know what? They used to sell spice grinders, but now they sell these great blenders mm -hmm. that'll just blend up anything. Do whatever you want. A little bit more. It should be about three parts salt to one part sugar. Okay. And mix this up, and then I'm just going to sprinkle it right on top, and just make sure I rub it right in. Nice. And then we're going to let this sit for about four to five hours. So not too long. No, not too long because you don't you're not making um, cold smoked salmon. You're just curing it for the flavor of it. Right. And you're just going to let it. You're going to rinse it off after it's finished, mm -hmm. and then we're going to stick it in the smoker. Okay. Now I so, noticed this is. Uh, the skin's been taken off. Can you smoke it with the skin also? You can smoke it with the skin if you'd like. Uh, but this is going to turn into a salad. Okay. So that we're going to have it on top of hair coverts. Mm. So I don't want people take, picking off skin and the skin won't get crispy. Sure. So Skin's no good unless it's crispy. Yeah. So I have the finished product, which I cut in half. Mm -hmm. The salmon's cut in half. It's cured. I, I rinsed it a little bit. Okay. And it is, it's been curing for, it cured for about five hours. And I'm going to take this on a roasting rack, just like this. All right. And I'm going to stick it in the smoker. And the smoker is set at 350 degrees. Which uh, is relatively high. Right. For about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. Great. 
You know, the other thing I love about this smoker is that you can control the humidity of it. Yes. So you can actually get a moist heat to cook whatever you're cooking as well. Correct. And you can put ribs, uh, pork butts, mm -hmm. anything. I actually rented one time for a large event, one of these big trailer smokers, yeah. and, and smoked pork butts in it. But actually, my backup was one of these smokers. Really? So that I, it, it's, it makes it perfect every time. It does. One of those other smokers should be like, roll the dice. I'm not sure if it's going to happen. Right. <laughs> if it's dried out. Or... Right. Exactly. This makes it perfect mm -hmm. each time. Stay tuned for more from the Chef's Kitchen Restaurant Edition. This has had to be the best kitchen that I've worked in for a show since I've started doing this. The intense heat on that grill, just amazing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make Houdia's verdicts. Okay. So we're gonna blanch the hair But one of, one of the biggest misconceptions of blanching, it's called big, big pot blanching. Okay. The biggest problem is people actually don't use enough water when they blanch their green vegetables. Interesting. So you wanna season this like you're, you're doing the Jersey Shore. Yeah, it tastes like ocean the ocean. water, right? And same thing over here in the ice bath. I season this also. Now that's something I never learned. It's because of when you're blanching something and then you're gonna put it in here, mm -hmm. it's gonna actually wash off all that salt. Exactly, yeah. So when, when I was telling you before about the, um, hair, the fava beans, the fava beans actually release a gas just like any other green vegetable. So mm -hmm. these are gonna go in here, they're gonna release their gas, they need enough room to do that okay so they actually taste like a green bean you stuff them in a small pot they're not going to taste good interesting yeah so these are going to cook for about two minutes three minutes okay and then while these are cooking our salmon is done great so we're going to pull that right out of the smoker you can see a nice smoke coming out oh yeah and what kind of wood chips are you using today we used apple wood chips nice So the salmon comes out looking a little bit dry. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually put a glaze over top of this. What do you have in here? It's an espalette glaze. So it's honey, sherry vinegar, sherry mm. wine, mm. and, and uh, a little bit of espalette pepper, which is a Spanish pepper that we grind down and we, we mount it right inside this. And that's a dried pepper. That's a dried right. pepper also. Do you mind if I taste a little bit of that on my sure. finger? <laughs> Thanks. Mm, I'm just gonna pop this right killer. back in just to melt it all, all on top. And the green beans should be done. So we're gonna take these and we're gonna put these right into an ice bath that's salted. So just about a minute or so yeah, with those. So. Still have a little crunch to them. Exactly. You don't want to be soggy like yeah. your gra grandma's green beans. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> More like brown beans. Yep. So we're going to take these and you're going to shock them. And I put the ice and, and salt in here so it actually tastes like something because I'm not mm -hmm. going to wash all of all that stuff. Right. Salt. That's a great tip. Yep. It just seasons the beans. We're going to take it, mix it with some parsley. And I made a dressing with a little frisee. So we're going to mix this with a little hericoverts parsley, frisee, and a smoked paprika vinaigrette. Nice. So this vinaigrette is basically uh, Pimaton de la Valle, mm -hmm. is, which is a smoked paprika. I'm gonna season this a little salt. A little what pepper. made this um, creamy or emulsified? We use Dijon mustard, mm -hmm. uh, roasted garlic, and olive oil. Nice. So we're gonna plate this right down the center. This is Five one minutes. of the salads we do in our catering or events. It's a really nice cold or room temperature salad. We're mm. going to garnish it with orange segments. Great. And a little bit of California sliced dates. I love dates. What kind of vinegar did you use in the vinaigrette? It's a sherry, sherry? aged sherry vine vinegar. Great. So we're going to take a couple of these portions of salmon. Mm, you can really smell the smoke coming off of that and the glaze. We're gonna put a little bit more of the glaze on. Mm. And my favorite part is called, is Marcona almonds. Wonderful. I'm gonna put this right on top. And these are chopped Marcona almonds, right on top. And kind of salty and toasty. Yes. Wow, I can't wait to taste. Oh, real quick, go. I wanna bring in Paul Riley. Paul's from Nordon. Hey, Paul. Hi, Nicole. I wanted to show you guys the paella itself. Mm -hmm. And if, we did it right, we'll have a little bit of crispiness just on the bottom mm -hmm. of the paella. And the rice will be just a little bit yeah. brown. 
right on the bottom. There it is. See that crispiness? Mm -hmm. That's what you want. That's my you bite. You gotta try that. <laughs> I'm gonna get right in. Mmm. Cook wonderfully. And you can you can divide up the paella. So if you wanted this section, or if he wanted this section, mm -hmm. we could we divide it all up for each that one of us. Section for me. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to have some too. Now let's get in here to the salmon. Everybody in. So don't it's be shy. A little hot smoked. It's glazed. Mm. That's really good. Nothing against the paella, but oh. this is fabulous. <laughs> And it's a really nice salad if you're going to do mm -hmm. something room temperature. Uh, you don't have a lot of cooking space, sure. but you want to showcase your smoker. You don't have to spend hours smoking. Definitely. It's really bright and acidic. <laughs> Paul, it's always a pleasure to be here at Nordon. Thank you for having us. Nicole and Adam, thank you for coming to our studio kitchen. Thank you. Thank and Adam, you. always great to have you on the show. Come back and do it again. Thank you for having me. For the viewer who is passionate about food and wine, the Chef's Kitchen provides tips and techniques from the country's most exclusive restaurants. Tune in next time to see one of the nation's top chefs such as George Perrier, Roberto Donna, Jose Garces, Michael Schlau, or Tony Clark as they share their culinary talents and unique creativity. Learn how to make the delectable dishes and hip creations they're serving in today's restaurants or impress your family with a culinary twist on tonight's dinner. Check our website for listings in your area or today's recipe. It's a great experience to be here at Nordon because all the equipment I have in my own kitchen. So I feel at home. I feel right at work every day. The, the smoker, the confection oven, it makes it really easy. 